So let's go straight to the point and discuss the political ideas of Socrates. Let's start with the Socratic method. This method is a method of arriving at the truth through debate and discussion. We call it dialectics. And dialectics means a discourse between people, a discourse between two people who have different points of view, but they are ready to arrive at the truth through a reasoned argument. And this involves something called eklenkus, which is nothing but a logical refutation of facts in a debate in order to reach a truth and that truth itself is not perfect it is also an imperfect truth but because the time of a debate is limited they agree to disagree they agree to arrive at some compromise and that imperfect truth at which they arrive at the end of the discussion is called aporia these are the concepts this is the basis of critical thinking and it was only in the renaissance that this critical thinking was revised and rethought about that was the impact of socrates now the next concept is that of knowledge socrates believed that knowledge is virtue and he was against Athenian democracy because at that time there were some sophists who were teaching the youth that material uh, possessions and power is virtue they were disregarding knowledge and that is something which Socrates disliked he disliked the way of teaching of the sophists and he disliked this rotten tendency in the Athenian democracy of that time. This is all about Socrates. Next I go into Plato. Plato believed that reality is nothing but the shadow of idea. In other words, idea is real. Reality itself is not real. He gave his allegory of caves in order to support his claim with an example and that's why he's called an idealistic thinker he also came forward with his theory of education because he was such an idealist he said that education should be divided into three stages the first stage should be up to the age of 20 years the second between 20 to 35 and the third between 35 to 50. It is in these three stages. In the first stage, the person should learn about the basic subjects. In the second stage, specialized subjects like science, philosophy. And the third stage, those who go up to the third stage, they will be trained to become what he called as philosopher kings and philosopher queens. They were the ones who would rule they would be in the ruling class. This was his theory of education. Then we come to Aristotle. Aristotle, in his theory of constitutions, he actually studied 158 constitutions. He did a comparative study of that. And he came forward with this, that if only one person rules, you, man, you might have a monarchy in the ideal state but that can get degraded into a dictatorship if few people rule you will have aristocracy which in certain cases might get degraded to oligarchy and if you have the rule of many people or most of the people that is polity and that might get degraded to democracy. What do I mean by degraded? Let's see. Monarchy is the rule of an ideal king. What 
Plato called as a philosopher king. But if he wields unfettered power and starts doing the wrong things, won't he become a dictator? Aristocracy is the rule of a few intelligent people. But when they form a group within themselves and keep the rest of the society under them in an exploitative manner, won't it become an oligarchy? And polity is where all the people uh, represent some leaders and those leaders look after them. But instead, if it's only the majority of the people who select some leaders who then become demagogues and do not regard the minority and do not represent all sections of the society, they just cater to the mob feelings, won't it get degraded to democracy? So oligarchy was a bad thing, democracy was a bad thing, and in between these two, you had polity, which was considered as a golden mean by Aristotle. And he said that I favor polity. Polity should be there. And like Plato said uh, that a philosopher king should be there, I don't support that. That is what he said. Next thing he talked about is citizenship. Here he said there was a theory of active citizenship. That is those people who could really contribute to policy making, who could participate in the assemblies because it was a direct democracy in Athens at that time, who could really be active in that sense, would be eligible to be called citizens. And that excluded old people, women, children, slaves, and even among the others, those who had property, a certain level of education. So the franchisee, as you can say, was limited. But those who were citizens were much more enfranchised into policy making because they could directly contribute their ideas, unlike the representative democracies of today. So this point has to be absolutely clear. And after this, he came forward with his theory of revolution. Now, Aristotle was a status quoist. He did not want a revolution. And just like Machiavelli in his The Prince made some recipes and specifications as to how the prince should conduct himself. Similarly, Aristotle said how to avoid a revolution. Remember in the previous slide, I discussed uh, that he had made some constitutions, he studied constitutions, and he said that there is aristocracy, monarchy, polity, all of them can get degraded. So in each of these cases, when can revolution actually happen? For example, in a monarchy when the king becomes the dictator, or in a democracy when the demagogues take over or if people are dissatisfied there is an economic crisis those are the reasons for revolution and how to fight a revolution he said some very smart things he said that the king or the ruling class should keep the people happy they should make distant fears come near they should keep the patriotic fever at a high level and those kinds of practical solutions Okay, now there are certain comparisons which can be made between Plato and Aristotle. Theory of state was stated by both of them, whereas Plato believed that there should be a philosopher king. Plato believed there should be a philosopher king and it should be an ideal state, a state run with ethics and this philosopher king could decide everything. He had huge discretionary powers because his knowledge was supreme knowledge, whereas the law was based on average wisdom. It was only later on, and these are things which he mentioned in his book, The Republic. It is only later on when he wrote the book Laws that he acknowledged that rule of law is indeed good. So he believed that a state is nothing but an individual writ large 
that is what plato believed what about aristotle aristotle had a different idea as i have already discussed that he studied a number of constitutions and scientifically came to the conclusion that there should be polity apart from polity he said that a state is a natural evolution from an individual so we have an individual then we go to family then we go to a society or a village and then we go to the state this is very similar to the notion which hegel told many many centuries later that state is the march of god on earth in fact it was only after uh, john locke that the importance of state was somewhat subordinated otherwise before that state was considered very very important and you can also understand that aristotle is giving a lot of emphasis to family and he is considering uh, family to be an indispensable part of this evolution further when i say that he favored polity he believed that this polity is most immune to revolution because he was the one who came forward with this theory of revolution and like plato considered one person philosopher king to be coming up and making the state aristotle did not believe state as such an artificial entity state was a natural entity formed as a result of this evolution so this was the comparison of these two people next is plato versus aristotle on justice plato believed that in one person there are three elements one is reason one is courage and one is warrior uh, i'm sorry reason courage and appetite these are three elements in any person and even in a society if there are many people then you will find that some people fall in this r category some fall in the c category some fall in the a category those who fall in this category are fit to be workers those who fall in this category are fit to be soldiers army men those who fall in this category alone are supposed to be in the ruling class and if each of these type of people do the work according to this then it is justice in other words justice is everyone doing things according to their position in the society he considered he created what some people call a myth of metals that those people having a reason element in them are men of gold those people having courage element in them are men of silver and appetite men of bronze and it is not fitting that a person of appetite becomes ruling class because he will not be able to control his appetite and rise to that level so a lot of criticism has come that he was a racist and he was dividing the society into these categories aristotle also said that this should not be birth based but should be based on one's own willingness to take up a certain job in the society so for aristotle justice meant meritocracy for aristotle justice meant that everyone should be given their due based on merit merit was a very important factor for aristotle and he called it proportionate justice that is giving people their due proportional to their merit this had two categories one was distributive justice and one was rectifying justice distributive justice means give everybody if you have 10 chocolates in a classroom then it should be given to different students based on their marks in the examination that would be distributive justice of course that would invite inequality but that would be justice and rectifying aspect is that if some person has done cheating or mischief 
then you give him punishment but if some person is weak then even if he has not uh, performed that well in the examination you should give him a chocolate so that goes against the spirit of merit and distributive justice so there is a certain element of dilemma between these two and later on this formed the foundation of rawls difference principle that i shall discuss maybe in some other video then we go to their ideas on communism plato believed that there should be a communism only for the ruling class not for anyone else communism for what communism of property and communism of family i'm talking about plato that means there should not be any private property of the philosopher king or any person in the ruling class there should be common ownership and common ownership and common use aristotle differed he said that if there is a common ownership then it is nobody's ownership because private property has a very ancient heritage and unless there is a fixed owner no one will take responsibility so aristotle aristotle uh propagated an idea of private ownership but common use at least there should be one owner of a property a philosopher king can be that private person can be there but he can allow common usage of that why not then with respect to family plato said that first of all the philosopher king should not have any private family any personal family the entire world the entire kingdom should be his family he should not have any personal children all children in his kingdom should be his children he should not have any personal wife all uh women should be his wife so that he does not have any personal wife any personal children any personal family there should be a communism of marriage of children etc a claim which aristotle disagreed with these were idealistic ideas which were th uh, thought by aristotle to be impracticable and that's why he disagreed with these ideas in fact aristotle believed in the importance of family just as i have discussed that in the evolution of a state from the individual he believed that family is so very important okay next thing are some other differences between the two now i have already told let me make a tabular form like this plato believed in idealism while aristotle believed in realism then plato believed in a radical path communism philosopher king then a um, perfect person you understand completely uh, idealistic so it was a radical path whereas aristotle was more realistic and he believed in a middle path he believed that we should choose polity as a golden mean next was the difference over family and property which i have already discussed another thing is that plato was probably the first feminist because he also allowed philosopher queens if a person if a if a woman had attained that kind of education according to his theory of education and was capable a philosopher queen could also rule but aristotle in his citizenship he said that women uh, should not be citizens and therefore he was a feminist aristotle maybe not so much and then if you analyze the different theories 
you will understand that there were more differences but there were similarities as well what were the similarities first of all both were critics of the sophists of that time okay then both were critics of the democracy that prevailed in Athens at that time and uh, i think i had read that socrates probably also w- was a critic of democracy of course and socrates probably had uh, said that uh, it, democracy was ruling in the garb of ignorance walking up and down so they were critical of that both supported inequality in some sense supported inequality because both of them uh supported uh certain sort of justice division in the society plato called it uh people of reason courage and appetite aristotle divided the society into master and slave classes so they supported inequality and both also supported slavery i'm not quite sure about plato because in the republic it is said that plato uh wanted to abolish slavery but how much was it possible at that time in athens is a matter of debate so i might not put this into the similarities but certainly aristotle divided the society into the master and slave classes and he believed uh, in slavery but he also believed in the emancipation of slaves when necessary both of them considered the supremacy of the state supremacy of state and both of them linked politics with ethics and it is only when machiavelli came uh, thousands of years later that he broke this link between politics and ethics so much more is there to discuss if i talk about epithets plato is called the father of political philosophy why so because he was idealistic he had this theory of ideas which is a philosophical idea and he came forward with so many ideologies and so many ideologies of the later years and even today owe their foundation to plato for example idealism which has also gone into international relations feminism realism was also a response to plato's idealism so he was responsible for that as well and uh, there are so many other the concepts of justice the concept of communism that marx uh, laid the foundation of thousands of years later probably also had roots in plato and which is why many people criticized plato karl popper called him uh, many things and criticized him and we must understand that both aristotle and popper criticized plato but both of them also praised him aristotle was his disciple and even popper said that one can be either platonic or non platonic sorry one can be platonic or anti platonic but not non platonic so and then the, uh, plato's uh, socrates dialectics was put into politics by plato he was indeed a great political philosopher why was aristotle a political scientist and the father of political science because of his scientific approach he compared the constitutions of 158 different states and that's and then he arrived at his polity he used comparative politics in fact the comparative politics that we study today owes its foundation to plato he used an inductive approach in other words he took specify uh, specific examples and came to generalizations plato had a deductive approach just the opposite and aristotle was realistic scientific he took the middle path and he believed in constitutionalism the rule of law these are the things which make him the father of political science so much 
has been discussed in this video and just hope that it has been helpful so do subscribe to news and statics share this video with your friends and until next time bye bye